Hello everyone, my name is Veronica Rose. Welcome for another session. Today we will discuss about IT, IT audit and assurance. And I have a special guest for you. He's from Kenya. His name is Dan. So uh, Dan, go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, thank, thank you, Veronica, and thanks for this platform. Uh, I believe people will benefit from this, what you're doing. So congratulations for this, and thanks for having me. Uh, so as Veronica said, my name is Dan Okocha, uh, an IT auditor for close to seven years now, going to my eighth year. Um, my education background, just for more of introduction, uh, I've done a Bachelor of Business Information Systems from Moy University, then I also did uh, a second bachelor degree in international business management from Hog School Utrecht in Netherlands. Uh, I'm also a CISA and also a CPA finalist. Yeah, so that's more about my background and education, yeah. Wow, that's a great profile, Dan, you have right there. Yeah, so um, Dan, as an expert, we know you're a senior information systems auditor. We would like you to yeah. take us through uh, the steps on how you go about auditing a system that you have no idea about. Go ahead. Uh, sure. Uh, as an IT auditor, of course, you expect that most of the time, either you've changed a job or maybe the job that the company that you're working for has brought in a new system. Uh, so most probably, you're not going to work with the same system all the time. Most of the time, you're going to find yourself uh, uh, given a new system and you're supposed to review it, do an audit and give value to the business. So my process that I would advise and what I do uh, uh, in my day-to-day -day work uh, to audit a system that I've never used is first of all, you need to understand the system. For me, I, I, I am of the opinion that IT audit or systems audit and the business process go hand in hand. There's no way you're going to audit a system when you don't know the process. So for me, first of all, is get involved, get to know the business. What does the business do? And how do you get to know what the business does? So one, you need to have reviewed the policies, the procedures, and the work instructions, if they're there. That would tell you that for a given process, uh, it starts from this point, it moves to the next point, it moves to the next point, up to the point that you're done with the process. And as an auditor, when you're reading these policies, work instruction and the policies, you're supposed to pick the key controls that are in the process. So let me give an example, maybe the procure to pay process, uh, where companies, of course, will get a requisition, eventually a PO is done, then eventually it's sent outside there for suppliers to do the delivery. So there's the delivery, the GRN, and eventually they get the invoice and pay. You need to understand all this process first that from requisition, who does the requisition? What are their limits? Who approves? Through what I've just said, who does the requisition and who approves and what are their limits? Those are controls there in the process. Now, when I'm going to the system, then first I need to know how that process starts. So you've understood the process. That is my first point of view. Through policies and procedures and work instructions, as I, uh, as I have said, next, you need to sit with the users who use the system to now do the process that you've just read about in the system. So that means you're going to sit with the support, the person who raises the requisition. You have to understand, okay, how does he, how does he or she does it? What are their limits? Does the system restrict that limit? So you can even try, if at all, from your policies, you've realized that this person is supposed to raise a requisition maybe worth 500,000 maximum then try 600,000 and see if the system is uh, going to pick that requisition or not. Then also the limits, uh, So sorry, you have to sit with the users from requisition, from the procurement bid to get the PO and eventually even how we receive the goods, how the GRN is done, the matching bid, if at all that is controlled, the three-way matching, maybe the GRN, the PO and the invoice before payment is eventually done. So you have to sit with users all through this process, what we call in audit, system walkthrough. So remember, I've given you the first thing is know the process by reading the policies, the procedures, and the work instructions. Two, sit with the actual users who do the, the work in the system from end to end. So that kind of just sharpens your understanding of the processes that you read on the, on the policies. And that also allows you to do the tests. 
Then lastly, again, to see also if the controls are working is now you have to get the data. So there's also the bit of data analysis. So you love to extract maybe all the POs and the amounts. Through that, you'll be able to see if the system you are told allows so-and-so to do a PO and approve a PO of this much. Then from the data, you're able to check if at all there are instances where this person has approved a PO that is beyond their limit. Then in that case, you have now a point to dig deep and find out, okay, is it that the control is not working in the system or was it an allowed kind of a gap? Maybe there was no approval and therefore this person was allowed to approve for that given instance. So that one allows you to now do the effective testing of the control. But that is more of application control of the system because application control is borrowed from the process. But we also have what we call the IT general control. So these ones apply across all systems. But still, you have to know the process. Because for instance, a company, ITGCs, or what we call IT general controls, would include things like uh, passwords, uh, session timeouts, and all that. It is the same thing for all systems. But each company will have their own policies on the same. So somebody may say for them, their password has to have a minimum of eight characters. And maybe there must be a number, there must be a uppercase, and maybe a character. But then another company may be having maybe a minimum of five characters. So one, and that's what I was saying, you have to understand the process first of all, so that you'll get this control from the business process or the, from the policies, or it is IT, IT policies and all that. Then now you're able to test what the company does. Uh, thirdly, uh, we've talked about one, just to recap so that people are very clear is one, understand the process. Two, uh, do a system walkthrough with the users. Three, do, during the walkthrough, at least do some tests, because you're there with the system and somebody's doing it, you can test. Three, do a data analysis to also help you verify that the controls are, are working. But then four, before you do your report, which maybe I should have said is, what is your objective of this audit? That, that should come out from the start, because I don't believe in uh, audits where we're only going there to find gaps. Ideally, there should be gaps that are going to help the business improve. So one is, what is it that you want to improve in the business? I believe in a report that when somebody is not an IT person reads, they're able to relate and say, by the way, if we do this, the recommendation that is being done by the auditor, then we are able to save on one, two, three, or we are able to make one or two, three processes more efficient and more effective. So that should be your goal. So as you do all this, first of all, think about how is your report going to do to, to add value to the business? So once you go through all those stages and you've done your data analysis, if you're a good auditor, you must have gotten some gaps. So the next thing is just to document your report, but then in a way that the recommendation you're going to give are going to add value to the business. I, I, I completely agree with you because value addition is the, is the key thing in here. So thank you so much, Dan, for sharing with us. Uh, would, you, would you be having any closing remarks? Yeah, sure. I think maybe I would encourage guys, especially guys who are aspiring to get into the IT audit, IT security. It's a very good field. And it's a field that is growing because each day we hear of different uh, security incidences or cybersecurity attacks here and there. It feels good if you want to develop your career to be that person that is going to help the organization towards uh, curbing or giving controls towards this kind of attacks or kind of control gaps that are being exploited outside there. So I would say people should get interest. Uh, you don't need to be an IT person to be an IT auditor. You need to have both, a balance of both. As I just said, you need to understand the business. You need to understand also the technical side. Uh, so that you become an all-rounded uh, uh, IT auditor. And that's why I say even as I was giving my background is, I've done an IT audit, IT degree, that is the business information systems. I've also done international business management. I'm also, I've also done CISA, which is more technical. I've done CPA, which is more of business, so that you're able to add value to the business. You're able to understand the business, understand the IT bit of it, and then bring these two together and with that, you're able to give value to the business. Uh, lastly, maybe it was also just to thank you for this uh, opportunity. I think it's a very good platform that people will be able to learn. Auditors will be able to learn from one another. IT security professionals are able to learn from one another. 
and also even companies are able to learn from what we discussed and implement in their organizations that maybe we are not there. So I think it's really a good program that we wish so many of these professionals will still come and give us more of their take on this interesting field of IT audit and IT security. All right. Thank you so much, Dan, for sharing with us today.